Good evening. Good evening. Hopefully everybody is okay. This is our yearly Christmas special, as hopefully the title would dictate. You see the fine gentleman sitting here next to me on my, I guess that would be my left. I always get confused. We always mess it up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard go. looking yeah, at it from, from a different <laughs> angle here. Um, just a couple call outs real quick, and then we're going to hop right back into Christmas and conversations and questions. For those in Patreon, I will have a couple more in-depth uh, videos up. They're going to be, um, I'll, I'll just surprise you with them. I've got some more content coming out though. They are shot. They are edited. They will be up still this weekend. If you haven't checked on the community tab and you posted anything that you needed help on, please check it again because quite a few, I had some questions on size dimensions or another photo on a few things for your identification on those. So please come back and check that. Everything up until late last night should have been answered, responded. I have not been home this morning. We had a car in the shop. Long story short, anyway, you'll have everything up tomorrow and everything responded to by tomorrow morning too. So if anybody needs something, post it tonight and I'll get to you by tomorrow as well too. So, and on with the topic now at hand or the discussion, I'm gonna swing it over to Dom next to me. If you don't know who that is, right on the very, very top of my description box, I have a link to his channel. If you don't know his channel, I would honestly recommend going on over there, subscribing before you even watch a video because you're going to like him either way you go. So let's have Don pop in here and do an introduction and, and start it off here for us. Don, you're too kind. Uh, oh, it's, it, it's fun to be here. Uh, yet again, for another year has passed for the Don and Dom Christmas show. Um, so thanks again for having me. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, as you can see, my name is the Primetime Treasure Hunter, and as my name suggests, I love to go hunting for treasures, as many of you do as well. I go all over the place. I love going to estate sales. I love going to flea markets, garage sales, and I love going to all sorts of other creative places and finding all sorts of um, uh, interesting uh, areas to go sourcing. I do some online sourcing. I do some retail arbitrage. I mean, I do private deals, private picks. I, I go all over the place. So I show all this stuff on my channel. And my channel is really, if you've not been there before, it's really a smorgasbord, if I could say that. There you go. Three times fast. I don't know. But um, all sorts of things. So I've got uh, treasure hunts on the channel. I do educational tips. I do all sorts of interesting live shows, uh, competitions, selling events, uh, thrift battles. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff over there. So, um, you know, breaking news, um, analysis, and there's just, it, there's, it, it's scattered. There's a lot of stuff, but it's all related to reselling. I'm getting close to a thousand videos. So we'll probably hit that somewhere in January. So come on by with a thousand videos. There's bound to be at least one that you should like. So <laughs> hopefully, but uh, again, thanks for having me. Sure, there'd uh, be a heck of a lot more than one, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. Jackass <laughs> Retro's here, by the way. He got a kick out of us talking about him last time because he got, he, he, he got a, remember when you came on my channel for the last show, we were talking he, about his store name? His he, he's name like, brought up a huge discussion yeah. on several other platforms yeah. and, and because of a conversation I talked about with him about that as well, which I changed my thinking on the names just because of right. Jackass Retro. And I decided right. that after digging into it, the, the evidence seems to steer that regardless, the name is catchy. Yeah. So yeah. He picked the right name, I guess. I think he did. Yeah. Perfect for him. <laughs> Happy Festivus. For yeah. those who are Seinfeld fans, I see Jackass Retro has <laughs> that on there as well, too. I also have Dom's channel here in the uh, the, the uh, chat box as well, too. So if you haven't checked him out, you got another source to get on over to his channel as well. He's similar to the kind of stuff that we sell and stuff like that, too. So comic book wise, he's a comic book guy as well. <clears throat> I love comic books. Maybe I don't talk about them as much, but I had a whole bunch here that unfortunately there were some metal men and I spent a little too much time looking through them. I, I was a metal man collector. I had, I think all 60 plus, And then I had all the brave and the bold first appearances and the whole, that, that was always my thing. I always loved the metal men. Now it's Vampirilla. I've got almost everyone. I've got a couple slabbed, but not, not, not number one slabbed. I'd love to have that one slabbed. Yeah, yeah, I've had the number one before, but um, it wasn't graded. It was a raw copy, but I was I was just flabbergasted to get, to have it. I I sold it eventually, but uh, yeah, so th that's a fun one to find. 
takes the right type of collector, I guess, for Vampirella. But you know, it does. It does. <laughs> I liked uh, Elvira too. So you know, the when I grew up around here, there was a a local horror show that played all the old Peter Cushing and Vincent Price movies, and it was called called Sir Graves, and he would he was dressed like a vampire. It was well done. It was out of one of the major Detroit TV stations, and he got up out of the coffin, and I. I have very fond memories on Sunday watching the show at six o'clock. He'd come out around here. It was only Sunday, six to late. It was Sir Graves' uh, horror show or something like that. It was called. There's well, there are, yeah. Well, there are a lot of um, shows like that that were created for networks um, where they had some type of character that would intervene during the commercial breaks for um, for the movies. And, you know, for sci-fi and horror. And there's one in particular. It's a really, really good bolo if you ever find anything. I'm not sure if you ever saw it, Don, because uh, he was located in Louisiana, in New Orleans. But they broadcast some of his episodes in New York and New Jersey area when I was a kid. His name was, I know some people in the chat are going to know him. His name was Morgus the Magnificent. My wife knows who. Yeah, we've yeah. Heard, I've heard that before, too. She was from the coast area, so it was one that played. There's probably like a couple hundred of those right. from what I've seen. The, the biggest, Sir Graves used to play all the way to Chicago, and it was picked up Chicago, and it was one of those that was like um, like a regional television network they used to have. I, I have fond memories. I always liked him because he... He, it wasn't like one of the corny ones you saw. This guy was really good. He played the part and he was creepy. He had one of those ghoulish laughs. And right. before I knew what Led Zeppelin was, when when they opened up the coffin, they'd play the part from, oh, shoot. Um, there's a real long solo in, like, they just go off with music in one of the Led Zeppelin songs. And it, it's that section. It sounds like they're actually, he's actually grinding his pick on the 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 bass is what he's doing it's john paul jones doing the music for it it's it fits it so well and i never knew it was led zeppelin until i was older and i'm like oh my gosh that's from sir graves i don't know if they had permission to use it but that's where it was from yeah well um it, it, that, that's awesome and if you ever if you ever see the, the morgus of them i got to go back to morgus for a second because i have good childhood memories of him if you he's so distinctive and don actually if you share my screen for a second i actually just brought something up that i think you'd find interested because it dovetails what i was saying with records i know it's a christmas show but maybe we work it we work from halloween into christmas because still the christmas season yeah. i've had that i had the record the morgus right. record right yeah did you on okay. Vin, uh, not that one. I've had the Morgan, the oh, one yeah, below it. I've been. Let me like it a little bigger. I love the horror horror uh, records. Yeah. So you've had this one? Not that one. The one on Vin, the one below it. I've had. I haven't okay. had that one, but it was. It's okay. a Morgus one too. Morgus and the zombies or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So this is the shirt. This is what he looks like. So if you ever see anything with him on it, could be t-shirts. Could be. Um, there's a movie that actually was made with him in it. That's also if you find like a VHS version of it, but you can't. Obviously, look at that face. You, you can't miss it. <laughs> right. I think I can tell you the movie. When we lived in Florida, we used to go down to uh, Wolfman, Wolfman Jack's Rock and Roll Palace at Old Town and stuff. And he'd be there sometimes. And he was another one of those personalities that had the radio show and he had a TV show and a national publication. Vin's a good label. They've got a lot of records that are on that label that are worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Yeah. V-I-N. Love that label. It's a small town label. Why don't we steer it to Christmas? So I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to have people think we're a little off there on topic. Well, we're a little off anyway, so that's okay. Yeah. That's kind of fitting with the theme, right? You can't beat that. And I am done. Just to warn you tonight, um, the naughty nice meter is all on naughty right now. So just just FYI, it's family friendly though. Now, <laughs> no, oh, I know. Family friendly. Oh, I know. Of course. <laughs> Hang on, just a second. Let me slide over to one spot here. I'm not great on reading off the names, but I do welcome everybody coming in. I'm, I always have even a worse time when I'm doing the live shows with somebody else. It's me. I apologize. I do try to call out names. I do see some in-house. Um, I'm not going to go through every name today. I'd like to try and get to some questions, topics, and actually talk about Christmas. Um, I really wanted to start off the topic here on sales, if we don't mind touching on sales for just a few minutes here, because everybody in... in Normally, I would not agree with eBay, but I'm going to agree with eBay full-heartedly on something they announced the other day. And I, I want to call it out because I don't usually agree with eBay at all. But eBay made a statement about the holiday is not going to be over after Christmas and New Year's happen. And I can assure you 100% that is that is honestly and sincerely the case. So 
they were recommending everybody to keep doing the promoted listings. I'm not saying to do that, but I'm saying that the sales do not end when Christmas is done. For right. us, for the majority of, of what I sell, I'm going to be fourth quarter sales for the next three months, January, February, and March, almost assuredly, because that's how it's been every year. Sales were tracking just like we have been. We're up from last year. Believe it or not, we've actually made up the five grand or so we lost from eBay's October 12th to the 28th. We've actually made that up if that tells you how well sales have been pushing with the stuff we've been doing. Um, don't know everybody else. How's how's it been going on your end for everything, Dom? Uh, things have been going really well. Uh, in fact, one of the things I'm going to start off with tonight in terms of um, you know just letting people know about something to, to look out for. We have been absolutely, and I'm going to give Mrs. Primetime all the credit for this. My wife, as many of you know, has been, uh, she's always been reselling with me, but she's really kind of actively jumped into the um, the eBay side of things like way more uh, this year than ever. And she really started bringing a jewelry business into, um, into the store. So um, one of the things that she's done really well with is, and you can see I have a whole whole little container of them right here what these are are all different types of uh christmas brooches and she gets these for pennies in bulk and i mean some of these sell for 40 bucks 30 bucks you know some will sell for 15 bucks you know or you know 19.99 but it's just a it's been for the last few months it's just been a constant um stream of this all different things i mean it doesn't matter they could be wreaths they could be christmas trees they could be santa clauses they can be made of all sorts of things it it doesn't matter but uh in fact if you share my screen down i'll show you an example um we'll go to my go to my ended listings so let me know yeah, when you shared it you know it's not you don't have your screen up there anymore oh hold on let me let me uh get that for you sorry Share screen. I was gonna say I, I I didn't think I did anything wrong. It's not there. Oh, no, that was because I stopped it before. Okay, there we go. So let me know when you share it. There we go. So uh, uh, as you can see here, like starting right there, um, and and I'll click on this one just so you can see. But you can just see here. These are just all or mostly all Christmas brooch sales. I mean, there's a few other things in there that aren't brooches that are Christmas related things we've sold, but you could see here, it's just a ton of Christmas brooches. It just keeps going and going and going. So um, like I said, you could find these things in bulk, you get them for really cheap. And a lot of people don't know what they have and they just sell it to you. And you know, you just do a little bit of digging and you find like, oh, wow, look, I found a $40 or no, I'm sorry, this one sold for 29 bucks. but. Um, but you know, thirty dollar brooch, or you know, like I said, somewhere else in the twenties. I mean, it adds up when you sell a whole bunch of them every day. You know, I know we talk a lot about you know big money sales and real high money sales, but big money comes in different ways. It could come in one single sale, or it could come in a whole bunch of different sales that add up. So we're really happy, uh, you know, jumping into this, and um, you know, something we uh, plan to continue on doing and making investments in. So you know, just wanted to let people know about that. It's been a real successful area for us this year. Yeah, I got a, we've got a, I don't know how if this is going to show up. The app probably won't show up, but uh, unfortunately, what are these called? Crinkles. You kind of see these. I don't know where these came from either. These are Department 56. You could, you could minimize the screen down this way people could see. Oh, let me, uh, let yeah. me just do this. There you go. Yeah, I think the green screen is going to kill it, but these are called crinkles. No, it looks good missing a little of the green on it but i've got a whole bunch of these now and and i never knew much about them because i always crinkles? used to find them crinkles i used to find them just separate usually they're like a dollar at a store some are less 15 20 bucks loose 30 40 bucks for almost anyone that um uh that you uh find on the card we in fact i meant to get another one we were out somewhere and we were trying to kill some time and i found uh fish a real nice maybe i'll post a picture of it on facebook or something it was a real nice fish ornament and I realized that we had another one of those. And then there's, they're like figure all any of those figure all ones with glitter on them always seems to do very, 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 very well for us. I love the little pins. I got a, I probably have a box like you do just the Christmas stuff. And unfortunately all of ours aren't up. We've been playing around with a lot of Christmas ornaments lately and stuff. Um, I love the Christmas ornaments. Those are probably one of my favorites. Now these are ones we decided to keep actually. These are ones off of a tree we had. I think we had these on a tree two years ago. 
I love the the old Christmas ornaments. I love the shaped ones. We've made a ton of money off of these too. Even some of the the like normal ones. This is a daddy one. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to show very well, is it? Yeah, it, the green screen messes with that yeah, one. Yeah, right? that one said daddy, which I thought was kind of cool. As a kid in grade school, we used to make like uh, clay angel Christmas ornaments and stuff like that. And believe it or not, you can sell those on eBay for ten or fifteen bucks. Your kindergarten Christmas ornaments. You know what I'm talking about? You ever make those in kindergarten? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it was yeah. like salt, salt dough or something we used to make them out of. We used to make, um, I used to make candy canes with little faces on them when I was in like kindergarten stuff. <laughs> They'd fire them and stuff. I've sold those. I've actually sold those on eBay, believe it or not. Wow. That, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's amazing. Um, Christmas ornaments, I know, um, could do really well. Uh, some people I've seen do really well with certain Hallmark ornaments that are just not, um, you know, they don't make them anymore. They're, you know, vintage ones. They're ones that Christmas were, vacation, uh, Hallmark Christmas vacation, yeah. the minivan, the leg lamp, um, uh, his boss's house. Some of those go for a couple hundred dollars a piece. We had the RV um their their or cousin's rv once before and i want to say when we had when we sold it we got out of the box loose almost 250 bucks for it wow yeah because some of those are like crazy limited and i remember at one time i used to have a bunch of the star trek i, I bought a star trek collection out and i didn't realize that the they were ornaments for a while and then i lived i don't know what they're doing now but at that time they're going for like 100 bucks for the uh ss or uss enterprise um, and then the generation, um, uh, next generation enterprise, I think we sold for about the same price too. I love the Hallmark ones. Yeah. What, what do you, in general, when you come across like a lot of Christmas ornaments, what do you generally look for in terms of like a, like a search strategy? Like if there's a whole big mess of them there, is there anything in like, let's say Indents you saw a whole shapes. bunch of them in box. Indents what, and shapes. Would you say shapes? Indents. Where, where I got one here. Indents and real thin ones are one of the ones I always look for. Like, um, I don't have one right here. Shaped ones, like I had a log cabin once and it was like a hand blown, little tiny. It looked really awful. It wasn't anything fancy. A lot of the mercury was gone and we sold that one for over $200. It was just a little tiny log cabin. Right. Um, like, like that balloon one you had too. I mean, that, that's a, that's an interesting shape. It looked, it looked they're, like a... They're teardrops, I think they call them. Um, okay. I've got probably about six or eight different versions of that same one. In fact, here's another one. I don't know if it'll show up. But... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, see, that, those remind me of hot air balloons. <laughs> yeah, in fact, some of these, there's hot air balloons. Um, I, I remade, I took some glass ornaments from one of the hobby stores, and we remade the um, hot air balloon, and then I put a die-cut Santa Claus under it, just like the Victorian ones with the crinkle wire and stuff like that. That's what most people do with with uh, the, the balloon-shaped ones. They'll make like a hot air balloon with Santa hanging under it and stuff. There's channels on YouTube that that's all they do is remake the old Victorian glass ornaments like that with modern day stuff. It's, you can buy it all still the crinkle wire that they used to make. And there's still, it's on Etsy is the only place I've ever seen it, but I love that sort of thing. If you're looking for Christmas ornaments, obviously mercury, the indents will have like a, a sunken in section on them. I, I should have grabbed some of those too, but the, the, the green screen is probably going to kill it anyway. I don't think I have one right handy. I got a whole bunch of them though. I love the swirls too swirls yeah the, the oddball colors but it indents going to be like sunken in and sometimes there'll be a scene inside of it mm -hmm. or like um uh, it looks like a mirror reflector the other ones are like figural i've had some that look like santa claus right i don't keep those because if those get broken they're out a lot of money these are i get these almost like a dime a dozen these 1950s mercuries but any of the figural ones in fact i I don't, I don't really want to get up, but I got some light bulbs we picked up the other day that are Santa Claus heads from like 1910, 1920. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Two of them work still. In fact, I have I, a, I showed it out in a video before, but I have a tester. We made a tester. I took out an old socket so I can test those at home without having to have the string. I've got a tester for all the little bulbs now. I've taken ratted out um, strings of Christmas lights and cut out a socket from each one, and I had my son weld them and solder them together. He's got a little resistor in there and I can test any light bulb that they make for even the big dome ones wow. as well as the figural ones. All you need is one of the sockets and you can rewire them. 
That yeah, would... any of those, um, any kind of holiday themed lights just in general. So, well, I know you've talked before about that you do really well selling uh, Christmas lights. Oh, you're right. Um, but, but it doesn't even have to be Christmas. Like, I know it's a Christmas show, but just as a broader tip, like I did a video a few months back where I came across some old boxes of uh, figural Halloween lights. So they were witches and um, ghosts, and they all still work. They were an original box. Um, I got them really cheap and sold all the boxes at once for like close to a hundred bucks. It was like a really good flip. So, um, and then when I met up with someone, um, at the uh, flea market and we were doing some thrifting together, he, um, had come across some, um, 4th of July lights. So they were like, you know, red, white, and blue themed lights. And, uh, he did, he picked them up for like a couple bucks and flipped them for like $50. So just be on the lookout for holiday themed, uh, lights. So, if you want to get into that business for the reselling lights, when they go down to clearance, we uh, oh, yeah. three years in a row now, we've bought all the white, red, and blue ones. Right. And only because those are the most popular colors, <clears throat> they're buy them NOS. You buy them after season, you get them 10 yep. to 20% on the dollar. And we hold on to them till for a couple months. They go up on Amazon as a merchant fulfilled. And we're getting top dollar for them out of season. And we're, we're making, you know, 120% off of what we spent 10, 20% to buy. And they right. buy them for patios, for decks for the summer. So there'll be a gap where no one's going to buy them from, say, and well, people like us will buy them. But you'll have January, February, March, and then starting in April, people buy them for weddings. You'll have all the white ones will be sold for wedding parties. They'll decorate the trees there. Hotels yeah. use them for like the courtyards patios your decks your boats your beach house that's where they all go so everybody always misses those around here and, and they just don't want to mess with them if you got the room to store them you i can i can get you know 400 matching identical nos lights if i go around to enough places all from the same thing one listing on amazon priced right you know good keywords little bit of marketing here and there and that's all it takes you know Right. And also, I remember from my time living in Florida that throughout the entire year, if you because I used to live in Florida, right? Yep, so I, do you years. remember they would decorate the palm trees with That's white what I'm saying at the hotel. Yeah. That's what yeah. they do around here. But, but even on like the main strips, like on A1A, they would do it like at Fort Lauderdale. They just had the, all the palm trees is lined up with white lights and it just looked like kind of Christmassy like all year, which was neat. Yeah, that's in fact, that's part of the reason why, because when we first did it, we first bought them. We did it in Florida the first time when we were doing eBay way back in the day when we first started. Yeah. And back then, no one would go out and buy the the markdown lights. So we were like one of the few people doing it. There was I had no competition. Right. None whatsoever. Around here, there's an easy I worked out some deals. So when they get pulled back because they didn't sell them at the stores, I buy them from a distributor instead of having to deal with the store. So I don't have to worry about going store to store. I just have to hit a couple of distributors and I'm done. I buy all their junk. They move it out. They only have so much space. That's where you get the, the best thing. A, a place that pulls back or hauls back the merchandise that doesn't sell, they can't store it. They they you know they can't afford to keep they're a moving company basically. Sure. They they get in merchandise they get out merchandise so i'm able to still buy it and they still make a little profit and i'm not paying very much for it and then i can make a pretty good profit but then you got to hold on to 400 of each light 500 of each light because it's far easier to to hold on to them than it is to try to send them in to amazon fba because of weight and, and the other sure. issues right it's i wouldn't want to have to pay for disposal of them if for some reason the market of lights crashed it hasn't before but that's true well and someone said in the chat i'm trying to remember who it was it wasn't that long ago hold on let me go see if i can find it um oh bass t horn said that in general brooches are having a comeback so uh, that's true the market is not crashing on brooches in fact it, it's expanding very popular area of jewelry but i also would say that um anything christmas themed that's jewelry um sells well so we've been selling christmas necklaces christmas bracelets christmas earrings i mean just anything christmas that's jewelry because just think about it you know people they want to go to their holiday parties their holiday get-togethers and they want to wear something that they think is fun and distinctive so if you could find something that's not brand new especially like you know, something vintage, something distinctive, something old, something new, yeah. something borrowed, something blue. Isn't that what it is? <laughs> Probably. Um, but the, you know, just something different, something that stands out, you know, that the person's going to feel like not everyone else is going to have it. Like that's, you know, but people are just looking for a form of 
self-expression and that's one of the things that we help people with in reselling is supplying them with that type of stuff so individuality talking about hallmark um we've got a bunch of hallmarks they're the little tiny plastic pins a lot of the the christmas ones light up or the santa moves his arms or you can wind them up i don't know we probably have a half a dozen of those i've sold some of those for 30 or 40 bucks and they're just 1970s or so hallmark ones even up into the 80s those still sell any of those little kitschy ones um do very well uh, another one that we've done very well on you can buy wholesale sometimes after christmas are the reindeer that do the little um <clears throat> jelly bean like they're pooping out the back end i don't know how to say that <laughs> properly but um come on john it's a family show <laughs> well, you, can, you can get those two after season because they make them in mass quantities and if there's not a lot of people out shopping those are some items you can get too and believe it or not people actually do buy those <clears throat> i don't know why but you know i think the wife might have picked up one before i think you might have know what i'm talking about do you not yeah 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 i've seen stuff like that <laughs> they sell i'd be surprised and sometimes you can sell them for even more than you know you would uh, imagine well, actually, I, I, I kind of another segue back. I don't know if I'm ever going to get off the brooches tonight. You're going to have to break me off of it. But it kind of reminds me of our discussion of sourcing things in bulk. And, you know, in the beginning of the video when I was introducing myself and I'm like, yeah, you know, I like to go to state sales. I like to go to garage sales. And then I said, and I like to find all these other, you know, interesting ways to go source stuff. Well, kind of brings up a funny story related to the brooches and buying things in bulk because we found uh, an advertisement on Facebook Marketplace locally. That, and it turns out that it was a guy I knew, Mrs. Primetime found the ad. And um, he's like, I'm available to meet in my storage locker. He's like, I do estate buyouts and I have all of this jewelry. He goes, and if you want, you can meet up with me and you could pick through stuff and pick out what you want. So we go, we drive into the storage unit together. We meet up with the guy. Of course, it's a guy who's like one of my local competitors that I see, but you know, we just start joking around when we met up. And he has these tables just lined up with, you know, jewelry from estates that he's, you know, sourced from himself or, you know, places that he's gone to clear out. So Mrs. Primetime's just going through it and I'm helping her. And we're just going through tables and we're literally picking out every single Christmas brooch or Christmas item. And eventually he looks at us and he says, and he laughs and he goes, you're not going to literally list each one of those things individually on eBay, are you? And Mrs. Primetime's like, and I'm like, yeah, we are. And he's like, like, he just can't process that. Like for him, he's a buy it and just flip Jump all of it at once. Yeah. Like that, that, that's his mindset. I and love those kind because I can usually get a good deal. Right. They're great. So the funny thing is that Mrs. Primetime's been tagging in her, because she buys so many different lots from different places. She's been marking on the custom SKU on eBay where she sources stuff from. And she's been tracking everything, especially since that guy said that to her from that locker. And she brought me in the room the other night. She goes, okay, listen to this. She goes, look, here's my list. She sold like 20 things from this big jewelry buyout that we did from this guy. She goes, I, I've already in profit. Okay. And then she goes, now go look at this. And she shows me two big giant bins filled with Christmas brooches. She goes, all that she goes, that's profit. And I just said, I'm I just so proud of her. I was like, that's awesome. That's how you do it. That's yeah, how, that's you, how do you do it. it. I mean, it's just, uh, but it's just so funny. Like the guy was like, almost like it was, like almost like a mocking laughter, like oh, I can't even like, are you guys crazy? Like, and it's just like, you don't understand. Like, that's how we can make so much more money off of your stuff that because we spent two hundred dollars with the guy, but we made that back quick, quick. Whenever I buy something like that, I can sell one or two pieces in the first day or two and the yeah. whole thing's paid for and I got a profit around here talking about jewelry. Three or four times a year, there's a church group out here. I'm not going to say where it's from. I don't want to give out too much information, but some folks who are watching, I guarantee you there's at least two because I saw one person here has been there. I've run into them here, but they run a church or a, a church sponsored sale and everybody around donates. And it's like a 20,000 square foot building. They rent it out for a three or four day sale. Every single piece of jewelry in this place is $2. It's all vintage. Uh, we've gotten gold bracelets, gold necklaces. I do awesome at places like that on the 14 karat and 10 karat gold religious medals. Wow. I've shown some, but I, the last one of those places I went to, I, I'm not exaggerating. We got over an ounce and a half of 10 and, and uh, 14 karat gold Wow, for $2 a piece per once. I got a Tiffany bracelet that the wife that actually kept. I got a second Tiffany that had the 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 i don't know what they're called the little class thing which estate jewelers sold me just a little replacement piece for two bucks and 
I love jewelry sales and I've never, never in my life until we were here ever saw a place that runs them to the extent I've never even been to a, a sale where it was just jewelry that had this kind. When you walk to the door, you got to, they give up baskets like these big baskets and the wife and I take them. And when we're done, our baskets are full. You already know what you're paying for it. Everything's the same price, two bucks. It all goes to charity and I, again, I could step off and show you how much we got from these places, but we walked out of there probably with like 12 pounds of nice quality, all vintage, vintage pins and stuff. The amount of money that can be made on those, as you know, with you and your wife now too. It's true. But you know, um, Jack has retro said in the, in the comments, he says buy in bulk, sell individually. He goes, it's such an easy profit profit model. And yet so few grab onto it and too much work a, for them that's what it right, is right well it's too much work for people think and it, but i think it's even something bigger than that don i think it's that's it's lack of patience i just think a lot of people just don't have the patience and they just want to just quickly flip it and they don't want to sit there and do it yeah the patience does involve the work aspect of it for sure but uh and people get overwhelmed easily you know that's another thing so you know, but see, that's the thing. That's where you, I, Jack S. Retro, and a lot of other people who do do that model, we just flip it. Like we look at the bulk and we get excited with it. Like a lot of other people, they walk in, they see that bulk because I've seen it. Like I've been, I'm in, I'm in rooms with bulk stuff, and people, I see people, other resellers, they walk in and they just say, I can't tell you how many times I've heard this. Oh my God, I got to get out of here. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> so yeah, I hear it all the time. And well, I, I just, walked behind people yeah. that picked up stuff in front of me, big lots of stuff, looked at it and go, what the heck am I going to help? I don't want to list this and stuff. I right. walk behind them and buy it all. Right. I see that all the time, too. <laughs> and, and most people, I, I get criticism. Well, you got so much stuff up and blah, blah, blah. And how would, how much are you selling all this stuff? I don't worry about the, the, the uh, specific amounts. We sell quite a few items just in the store I share, but it's the dollar amount. Everybody... Everybody worries about, you know, well, I got to have all these packages going out. I can send out 10,000 packages and only make five bucks out of all 10,000. Right. I heard I you say that. One. Right. I, I yeah. have to say it all the time because people send me a picture of their how much packages they're going out. And I'm like, how much money are you making and how much time do you have invested into that? That's what matters. People think the wrong way. Once you or I get all those, the pins up or, or whatever we're doing, right. all the work's done. It's passive right. income. It just sits there and sells to infinity from that point on. <laughs> and you keep doing that. You, you you list a bunch of pins, a bunch of books, a bunch of comics. You keep adding big bulk stuff and, right. and it's a constant flow of sales. Right. Every time you add a new group of listings, more stuff keeps selling. It That's builds right. up. It, it just it, it's a pyramid. It, it just starts off with just a few listings, and as you go, it just it, it expands it, again. A legal pyramid, by the way. A good a legal. Pyramid. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, a pyramid <laughs> shouldn't be it, but you have exponential growth where where it just you're building off of what you already got. You're not. A lot of people take stuff down. I I still I still see people do this. They'll list it for an auction for a week. They'll relist it once. After that, it goes off. They don't I list it again. Too. I see that too. And even postcard guys that, do that. But, right. But see, that gets what I'm talking about. That gets to the patience part. Yeah. Like, I think you got to kind of have to be in the mindset that you're in it for the long term. This is it. This is what I'm doing. That's exactly right. And the other thing that most people either they're not doing it yet or they don't think about is that when you're doing this, just because it may not sell on eBay, if you're going to cross your, your items on other sites, you have infinite amounts of opportunity that way even if it's not a market on ebay there's a lot of things that ebay is not the right market for nothing against ebay in that aspect there's a lot like amazon there's certain things i wouldn't list on amazon because they won't sell so i mean when you know the markets and you can cross list those items <clears throat> starting off you know just on one site a lot of people think you know you got to sell it on ebay though i'll get comments well you're not selling it there I'm like i don't have to sell any specific item here or there it just has to sell it's, right. it's again, it comes down to how much money you have coming in off of that. If right. I'm doing $800 profit a day, I don't care how many packages are going out. You know, if, if that's what my store is rolling in at, that's that's numbers that I'm fine with. That's $24,000 a month. Right. I don't know about you, but I don't care if it's five packages or a hundred. I'm, I'm not doing a ton of work to get that amount of money in. So right. people miss that aspect of it. They, they're always thinking about the quick dollar, the, the, the short term. It, they're, they're never thinking about the, the long haul aspect, just like what you said. Everybody thinks about, I got to get the money back. And I know when people start off that you might need the money, 
But once you get to a certain point, too many people just throw stuff into a lot and are giving away hundreds of dollars because they don't want to mess with it. Right. Right. Um, I think, do you hear an echo? I don't know. I haven't heard anyone in the chat say it here. I don't have it on my end. Okay. Um, well, now I give another reason why sometimes why people are hesitant to do the bulk uh, purchase. I kind of alluded to it earlier, but I could show it to you through another example if you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do a screen share. I could show you. I can show you a few other examples in a minute here. We'll talk to. So this is something that literally occurred. Don, Don could um, attest to it. We were sitting there. Yeah, talking. you shared that one with me. Yeah, we were talking on our last show afterwards. And while we're talking, we got a cha-ching. And this is what. Uh, Miss Primetime got those. Isn't that who got those? She, she did. And the story I want to tell about this is this is just one aspect of many different pottery barn. Uh, this is the reindeer uh pattern that's here and these are the cereal soup bowls but you, you can keep that up down I'll, I'll show some other examples so that one literally sold for three hundred dollars and then the question is going to be well how much did we get that for well it wasn't just that you could see here there's some other examples so this one here is a pottery barn uh santa's reindeer dinner plate set that sold for a hundred and seventy dollars then i'll show you a couple other ones and I'll, then i'll tell you how much we uh, paid for everything this came off of a uh, another Facebook uh, marketplace deal. Um, it's lagging a little bit, but here we go. Uh, whoops, that went, but oh, I went a little too far. So uh, hang on a minute. I got to enter Christmas again. But um, what we paid for all of it as this stuff is coming up is we paid a total of $90 and it was $90 for um, so many things related to that theme. So here you could see another one. This is the Pottery Barn's reindeer dessert plate set. And this one sold for $117. So we've got that one. Um, and I did a plate. Uh, I did a, um, I got ahead of myself in my words. I did a video on shipping plates. So if anyone's interested in that and they ship from New York to California, they all got there fine. Here's a, um, a cup set that sold for, and this is all from the same bulk purchase. These sold for $86. And what's not shown here is there is a butter dish that she sold for $210 that had a crack in it. Um, you could take that off the screen, Don. I just wanted to, to show that. Um, but the, the point of the story is that when she originally bought all that stuff, she bought it all for $90. And that was after a, a negotiation. We still have other stuff related to that lot still in our store, like a platter and a couple other pieces. But she made she was in profit, just like you said, Don, off of the first sale when she sold that butter dish so everything after that has been has been profit but i think sometimes that people will hesitate because they don't want to shell out that 90 dollars, or they don't want because it seems like it's too much they don't want to shell out the um the 200 for all the brooches because it just seems like it's too much like how long is it going to take for me to get that money back people start doubting but you know if you have good evidence based on the comps that this should be a good deal um you really shouldn't hesitate in in making that investment um, you know, and, and because you, you could just make so much more money off of that initial investment. So I'd say that to people who, you know, are just used to just doing the, you know, the dollar purchases, the $2 purchases, like at a certain point, if you want to grow and you want to expand, those are the kind of things that you're going to need to start doing to get, you know, some of those higher priced, uh, items that could really give you those nice returns on investment. Bulk. I talk a lot about bulk, and I've I've got a couple of Patreons right now. I don't want to call it names. I didn't ask. I don't know if either one of them are in here, but um, people post images and on my Patreon page and stuff for help and stuff. And a lot of folks pick up a big box or uh, hundreds or a thousand records or something, and wondering, you know, what are they going to do? Man, there's so much here. But if you take the time, you know, just sit down, relax, do a little bit at a time take the time, you can make a ton of money by doing the homework, doing the research, not letting it overwhelm you. I've had, you know, enough to fill up the entire house with records. And, you know, we've got 350,000 records probably in inventory right this very second. Wow. Wow. You can, it's one of the easiest things to either get yourself over your head or do awesome. And like 78s, people were posting some photos of 78s. And this is the third person who's reached out to me. And on 78, they were able to get a whole bunch for almost nothing. And with the first couple that's put out there, they had money back already after just a couple of the ones they randomly right. pulled out. If you know 
enough about anything, any specific category, like Dama Comics for Me Records or whatever, right. whatever we're talking, whoever it is out there. If you know enough to be able to be dangerous out in public, you can snag up these big deals and stuff like that. <laughs> the next thing people say is, well, how are you ever going to find big bolt stuff like that? Records are easy and, and far too many people just don't know how to look for them. Almost every town where I get a lot of records and I have in the past, I'm talking 5,000 at a time, 10,000 at a time on a routine basis are jukebox companies. They're all going under. It's all digital these days. That's so interesting. They're, they're, they're dumping off all of the vinyl is going bye-bye. I've got university connections because they That's pick right. one for a collection. So I get leftovers from university. I get ones from colleges. I get ones from some of the smaller school systems here. But all the jukebox companies in Detroit are changing over what they do for jukeboxes. They've been doing this for four or five years. So if you, you don't know where to get them at, start looking in the phone book a 10 year old phone book, a 20 year old phone book and find out where the jukebox companies were, who owned them and track down some names and some companies. I found them sitting in a warehouse that no one cared about. We've been able to buy enough to fill up five van loads for a couple hundred bucks because they were sitting in someone's warehouse. He just wanted them out of the building, you know? So, and this is just an example. Dom, Dom tracks down comic book, big, massive comic books. <laughs> They're trapped uh, doing the same thing with Julie. I do the same thing with Julie. I do the same thing with comic books. It, it, of course, you got to have some experience a little bit to know you what do. you're getting yourself into. You but you if you're like the like the 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 um, record purchases, if if it's fifty bucks and you're buying five hundred records, even if it's not worth a whole bunch of money, for fifty bucks to learn enough to be able to at least say all these types of records aren't good, it, it's it's a learning experience. But most of the time, people won't take that in. They'll say, I'm, there's no way I'm going to look through all these records. I hear that all the time. I just I can't afford to look through and do 20 a night. It doesn't really take that long. You'd be surprised. Right. You're going right. to run into the same record a couple of times and already know I don't want to look that one up. I already know. You do that for you know a, a length of time, and you're, you're not going to have to look up most of those records. So you're gonna we're just using records, action figures, right. whatever it is. Do anything. Any it doesn't matter. Tickets. Right. We we sold a bunch of tickets today. I did a bolo in, in Patreon too on some items, and, and those again, I've sold some more since I showed that video, and I think I showed the video yesterday or the day before. So just in a day, I've sold more of certain items just because you know I know what's what's collectible, I know what people don't care about. Like you talking about putting those together, then a guy talking about um, you're gonna list those separately. You should see when I bring a box lid of junk up to an estate sale and say, how much for all this stuff? And they're looking at it. It's just a bunch of paper. or some ripped stuff. I love doing that. And, I and love doing five that. bucks. Five That's bucks. Right. For and I'm like, That's one right. item in there is worth a hundred bucks. So you know what? That's the heck right. do I care? That's right. Exactly right. Um, because that's the funny thing is that I found that as well. And I, I talk about this a lot in my videos when you know when I show me sourcing at the state sales, is that when I bring up that giant box to the state sale dealers, they don't they literally say, do not take that stuff out. <laughs> don't take it out. They're like, let me just take a look. They're like, all right, how much do you think? Or whatever. Like, you know, they, or they'll just throw out a number. And I already know based on what's in there. I'm like, yeah, that number is perfect. That's fine. You know, rarely do I even have to say anything like negotiation or anything because it's just such a great deal. It's just, you know, for me, that style works really well. I don't mind taking the time. Like I said, I'm in it for the long term and I don't mind learning new things either because that's another thing. Like I've talked like I was, you know, until I'm blue in the face about comic books. And yet I, I always have people who tell me I don't know anything about comic books. I never grew up with comic books. There's no way I could ever learn it. And it's not true. I mean, you can. I mean, I don't know if you saw today, Don. Record breaking news. Action Comics number one just sold today. And this is part of the Edgar Church Mile High comic collection. Sold for $4.5 million. That is a record comic sold book it? sale. Just uh, um, it was a private it was a private sale, so I don't oh. know. Yeah, but um, it just goes to show you. I mean, and the market on comics is just it just continues it's going to, up. It's it's insane. It's like, I mean, I'm sure at some point there'll be a bu a bubble burst, but right now, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's it's almost like gold. It just keeps going up and up and up. It's Wall crazy. Street, you've got Wall Street big bank investors investing in collectibles right now. That's what's driving the market in my book. Yes, they yes. can't trust the the regular stock market because of the the volatility with everything going on. They used to invest in you know transportation was a given, you know banking even right now is is risky. So what isn't risky is what they can instantly flip around for money. And a lot of what I see, like the high dollar comics, are being bought by people as investments. They're in people's stock portfolios and all kinds of stuff. 
you know? Right. Yeah, absolutely. That's my take on that part of it. In in general, though, bulk, people say you can't find bulk. Again, it, it takes you a little bit of time. I couldn't do it when I first got out. Could you, Dom? You couldn't just go out there and grab bulk every day you go out? You mean, was that my model at first? No, or? but I mean, when you first started off, it wasn't like I, you could find it. It was hard. It was hard pressed to find a big bulk lot of anything when I first started off. I didn't know where to look. I didn't know who to call. I didn't know where to go. I didn't. I didn't have the search thoughts in my head to randomly yeah. call or stop by places right, that nobody right. else stops. By. Yeah, there, yeah, absolutely. There's definitely a learning process to it, and you figure out where the best spots are and stuff. And yeah, for sure. I mean, connections wise, getting your name out there too is is a big, huge plus. We have business cards. I'm sure you give out something too. Yep, I yep, I do. Those are very important to have. And um, I always tell them with the business cards. I say, listen, just right now. I said, just put my name. Put my name in your phone right now, and, and and let's text each other so we establish the connection. This way, um, I know they don't they didn't they don't lose the card. So uh, that, the that... back of my card says what I buy. Um, it has different contact information. Um, it, it, it's a good way to get some good inventory, I, I would say say the least. And if you've bought from them before, you know, repeat business, they're going to call you first. I always tell them too. I pay more than anybody else. I can afford to. I can now pay quite a few people around here without even having to worry about it because they're worried about spending too much money or this or that, or they're smaller time and they just can't afford to shell out a bunch of money. And they're always trying to cheap and lowball everybody. That's why right. I get better deals than other people because I don't cheap, cheap. I'm not cheap. I'm not going to lowball them. You know, if they give me a lowball price. I'm sure as heck going to take it though. You know, right, right. I'm not, no, no charge me more money. Cause I hear people saying, well, you're ripping somebody off. I, I gave the guy his price. He offered, he said, Hey, you want it for a hundred or whatever? I paid it. I, don't I think saw that... this. Yeah, I saw this today. There was um, I I won't mention. It. I mean, he put it public, but I, it, not that I thought he did anything bad. He didn't. Another YouTuber, uh, and he you know goes out sources stuff, and you know he shows his sourcing, and he he posted a comment on Instagram that um someone had commented on his video. I think it was just someone from the general public who saw like you know what he does, which is what we all do. You know, we go out, we find deals, we bring it back, we tell people how much you know that, that things are worth and stuff like that. And so, um, you know person was calling the guy out as like a, as a mercenary who preys on the elderly and preys on you know young people and tries to find stuff from them that because they don't know what it's worth and uh you know if anyone ever sees this bandit around make sure you call the police and like all this stuff like it was like really bad you're gonna go to hell like some people just they cannot they, they really attribute like really bad like morals and stuff to you know to resellers who go out and source stuff and find a deal it's like you know i i don't think they totally understand like what's all involved in it <laughs> well I, th just this week i've had three people that offered me something that i'm probably going to buy from each one of those three people if if we can come together on something every piece that, that they've been offered is something that's way more work and they haven't a clue on and they think, you know, a lot of people think, well, I'll just sell it myself. I hear that a lot on, on that. You know, if I say, this, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is how much I can pay for it. If you're not right. interested, that's fine. You know, if you want to sell it on your own, be, be my guest. I, I'm just, it's going to take you a lot of work to research it. You don't know what you got. You don't know how to properly list it. You don't know the keywords. You don't, I mean, every step of the way, they're going to be blocked at it. And, and so I've got a, a bunch of, as you do, anybody who does this, we've got time invested into, our knowledge and, and a lot of people forget that you, you've got money invested into what you know in your head and and that's why it's worth it's worth such amount to you that's why you're the best person to sell to and that's why i can pay more than everybody else with what i buy because they don't know what they're buying i'll know better off you know a correct price compared to anybody around here with paper anyway i don't think i have much of a competitor anywhere within probably 50 or 60 miles of me that knows paper that's why if i that's why I can get the big, well, I, I should show you something I got, but I, that's why I can get big bulk lots of what everybody thinks junk. I mean, all the time. And it's not junk and people just don't know. They just assume it's some little piece of paper or, you know, a little card. Right. Do Like business cards, man. I, I, we've sold thousands of dollars worth of business cards. And to anybody else, it's just junk. Yeah. I mean, I've seen them throw them out, just like pens and pencils out of like a, a drawer. They don't want to sort them. They'll throw them in a big bag. They'll just dump the whole drawer at an estate sale into a bag, zip it up five bucks for the pens. One pen in that lot could be worth a hundred bucks. You know? Right, right. I mean, and a great place to look, by the way, a little tip for, um, I'm going to show this in my next video, for, um, for, for business cards is inside of 
books, especially old books, because people used to use business cards as bookmarks. Bookmarks, yeah. And so, like, I went through a book that I found at this creepy estate sale that I went to, and inside of it, and um, and interesting, it was a tourist guide for New York City from 1968, 1969, which I got the book in and of itself to sell and listed it. But then inside, I saw that they had um, two business cards for a Chinese restaurant. Uh, on 45 Mott Street, which was called the Chinese Rathskeller. I don't know if anyone remembers that, uh, who lived in New York City back in the 60s, 70s, uh, but they opened in the uh, 1940s and then they closed in the 1970s. And so having something like that, you know, someone will buy that who has that nostalgic memory, who's just messing around eBay one day and say, oh, I wonder if anything, I love, used to love that restaurant. I wonder if there's anything about that on there. They see it, you know, and it might only be like, even if it's just a $10 sale, you know, found two of them 20 bucks you just found stuff in the book that you didn't even necessarily expect to find in there there it is and now you just got 20 bucks literally out of inside the book you haven't even sold the book yet yeah business cards are, are fun i mean i've sold business cards for over 500 dollars for a little piece of paper with maybe 15 or 20 words on it and it's 500 dollars out of stuff like that right if you're talking about like hotels and restaurants and stuff Anything from certain hotels, like the plates, the china, the silverware, uh, uh, a napkin with their initials on it, um, letterheads, empty envelopes, um, stationery, uniforms, buttons, anything. Menus. I'm sorry. What you, menus. Menus. Definitely menus. Any of that stuff. Anything that's tied to places like that that may be closed down, hasn't been around in years. We make a lot of money off the room keys. Room keys are huge. Mm, room, yeah. Las Vegas room keys are massive. I've seen and I've sold some for a couple hundred bucks, but there's some room keys from some of the casinos in, in Las Vegas. You could get a thousand dollars for them hmm. for a room key with the, the key tag, the, the brass hanger with it as well. And I've shown some in videos. They're awesome stuff like that. Even also stationary, like pencils and pens. Yeah. Jack S. Retro mentioned pencils. Any of that stuff. I, we, we sell pens and pencils for, geez, I think the highest I've sold a pencil for was around like 175 i've sold pens like fountain pens for four and five hundred dollars you know 1920s really nice ones too so advertise you've sold the kiss ones too didn't you get a couple hundred bucks like 300 bucks for those uh i think it was 237 dollars and 50 cents for uh for like two or three kiss pencils that were still sealed in the original packaging i did a video on it it is crazy we're talking number two pencils with the right. razors i've bought those where I found them the most, they're usually in like round tubs. Sometimes they're in like um, uh, Lincoln log tins and things. And I bought like five and 10 pounds. People used to collect just pencils when they go around. Most people are like, who would collect pencils? But I've sold, we've probably sold five, 600 pencils, just pencils. No exaggeration. I right. probably have two, 300 in inventory right now, but we've probably sold 500 number two pencils, even if they didn't work, even if the eraser was was hard and is was just junky, you still get good money for it. Railroad pencils, hotel pencils, airline pencils, kiss pencils, all that stuff. Anything cruise ships. The, pardon me? Cruise ships. Cruise ship. Any any transportation in general, yeah. man. I, I do large chunk of what we sell are transportation labels, menus again, um uh passenger lists, Posters. um What'd you say? Posters, Co coasters, coasters, posters. Um, I love labels. So anything label wise, I love. I mean, I love the history. I love what's tied to them. I love the artists that do them. Um, all that stuff is just hot items. Tiki, Hawaiian, which all kind of mixes into travel, exotic places. Posters, though, I've been on this big kick. Is we? I've been listing posters lately, and love we, posters. I love posters too. I got like two thousand of them to list, so I'm not not in a hurry i'm doing like i gotta do 12 more today We're, i'm doing myself 40 a day i'm trying to do and i'm wow 12 more to do wow. before i go to bed tonight wow i'm taking my time i'm not in a big hurry but you know what else a lot of people don't think of that's also good you mentioned it but um erasers there's a lot of people my daughter's one of them who collect erasers i'm not talking about i know exactly off, what you're talking snapping about off the pink part of the eraser i'm talking about collectible erasers there's a lot of people who are into that and you can find them i mean i Super remember heroes one, yeah yeah, serial well, promotions. Yep, they, they, believe it or not, some of those could go for great money. I mean, I, I remember Rito Bandito's one, like forty bucks. He's an eraser. Yeah, I mean, I thought when well, my daughter was more into that. I remember we went to an estate sale once, and in the basement there happened to be all these. There was like a box that had all these like random erasers in it, 
she had a field day. I'm like, yeah, go pick them, pick out all their racers for me. <laughs> I gave them all to her, you know, she, she still has them, but, uh, you know, she had a fun time, but yeah, they are collectible and people will pay up for them depending on what they are. There's the, the ones that I get the most money for, and I've got a little hamburger over there. They're puzzle erasers. It's like five or six pieces that go together to make one, one actual puzzle or a character. I have an ice cream cone one sitting over there too. It's five or six little pieces, 10 or 15 bucks for the most common ones sometimes, if they're good, not used in the whole works. Those are mostly from like the 80s and 90s, most of those. Our kids had them as, as a kid. Our kids had them in school, and they used to get them on when the Scholar Book Fair came around. They used to get them when I was a kid. And I remember having a Pac-Man one, a Pac-Man set. It was the Pac-Man and then the four ghosts. And it was like, I don't know, oh, a dollar God. something. Those sealed are like 60 bucks now. And it's yeah. just, it's it's five erasers. That's all it is. <laughs> it's amazing. But yeah, anything Pac, uh, anything, I will buy anything vintage Pac-Man. I mean, I have, I don't think I have, where's my Pac-Man thing? I have a Pac-Man thing here somewhere. I don't know where. I see it. Oh, it's there it the ghosts. There it is. Yeah, there's my Pac-Man and ghosts. I just absolutely love it. But that reminds me, going back to our Christmas theme, like if you could take any popular, like pop culture character, like here, like this is something I actually have in my eBay store right now, which is this um, Porky Pig candle. So you could see here, here's the wick up top. Um, and he's on a little train. So you mix a couple things together, right? You've got Christmas mixed in with transportation and uh, a popular character uh plus candles people collect candles so you got four things at once it branches out to four different types of collectors cross category you know, interest yeah you cross category so anytime you could find i don't care if it's comic books that have like a christmas theme comic art that's related to christmas um you know science fiction shows like you were talking about star trek earlier like doctor who my favorite tv show they have a Doctor Who Christmas special that came out on DVD, and they they do little things like that where they dress the characters up in Christmas hats, and you know they'll make like a Christmas themed, you know, even like for something that was intense, like He Man Masters of the Universe. The they actually had a Christmas special special, and He Man's got a Christmas Kira. hat on. Yeah, yeah, and it's actually it's very collectible. So Star um, Wars Christmas special, right? All those things. People love that stuff. And so if you ever find that stuff, anything with a pop culture character attached to Christmas, definitely go after that stuff and um, and source it. I'm sure Don has something. Oh, I by the way, speaking of I've Christmas. Got a Rock Lord eraser up here, but I can't get him out. A Rock Lord eraser? You know what Rock Lord is? Yeah, yeah. I got a Rock Lord eraser, but it's stuck in there with a whole bunch of change and tweezers uh, on top of it. <laughs> tweezers well i speaking, got tweezers all over the place speaking of christmas by the way i did officially want to confirm on video you did receive my christmas present yes i did i in fact i was planning on wearing it today but he got me a real nice shirt i'll have to show out a picture of it but i can't wait to see you in it it's be funny green it's, screen yeah so don sent me some christmas type of present earlier during the year so he, he well, said i got that, something else here for uh, you when i get a chance you don't have to, i remember the one time you sent me the boxes of cereal <laughs> well you're a cereal fiend i am i am a cereal fiend so i actually just uh i don't think he's watching tonight but um someone who won something in my well bought something in my buy it now thon event he wanted my booberry shirt to have a booberry cereal shirt and i actually I actually gave it to him. I gave it to him as an extra. So if he's watching, he knows that's coming. But um, if it flips, it ships. If you have an all black original Hasbro Weeble with no nothing else, it's all solid black. I will buy it. I will. I'm giving a hundred bucks for anybody who can come up with one of those. Right. Just FYI, I'm gonna have a my my the auctionprofessor.com will be open in January, and I'm gonna have a list of things I personally buy for our collection. I pay more than you will get out of eBay. Just FYI on any weebles that we need. So if somebody does, I did have a call out in my last video on an all black weeble. It's an old original weeble. It should be two inches tall. It looks just like a normal weeble, but it is solid black. All of it, not see through, just black. It's not a sticker. It's the color of the plastic. Mm -hmm. I will pay a hundred bucks for anybody who, who brings me one of those. Now, you know what's going to happen. Someone's just going to paint a Weeble black. and I know the difference. I know exactly how to tell. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> There's a couple Weeble sets that I will pay 400 cash, which is almost $100 more than you will get on eBay for them. I want it. So there's the, there, there'll be some things. And I know if somebody's going to turn them up for me one of these days. If, if it flips, it ships. If you do have one, drop me a line on my email address here on um, YouTube if you actually have one of those. Yeah, no I'm teasing, by the way. Don't tease Don. That's not nice. Yeah, there's very few we need, but if, if you have foreign ones in the boxes, we will pay you top dollar for them. The Brecker ones, I want the most. If anybody has the Spanish Weebles, the Brecker is the company that makes them. 
I will pay you up top dollar for those. I promise you'll get more from me or the Kenner versions from Germany in the box. Any of the oddball ones, the green, green haired um, clown. I know I'm off topic here, but I know, yeah. I know there's some folks out there that probably know what I'm talking about, but yeah. Don is Tommy said, Don is serious when it comes to weebles. He sure is. Well, she's, she, my wife's probably got in the top five in the country of, of collecting yeah, the, the, weeble, the weeble queen. That's for sure. You haven't seen anything. I mean, I, the, I know, I know. I saw the weebles video. I'm, oh no, that's, that's just scratching the surface. Oh yeah. You don't even want to, we've got a whole room. Let's just put it that way. And that doesn't oh. even encompass. That's just what we can put on display. So there was a question in the chat that had to do about, uh, there were multiple questions that was asked. Um, I'll segue it into something Christmas and then you can answer the Christmas thing. I mean, the, the general question, Don, was, was do you ever grade postcards? But um, po it just reminds me, postcards are great to get associated with uh, Christmas themes. Like here's a nice vintage uh, Christmas postcard that I have listed in my store right now. And I just sold a $50 Santa Claus like an hour yeah. before the show. And a good tip on Santa Claus, if you ever see Santa Claus wearing a blue robe, those Any are color, really, blue, blue really purple, popular. green, yeah. or brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're really popular. So a lot of people would think, well, they're red, but if you have an off-color robe. So, and it doesn't have to be Santa. Like, it could be a, like, this is from 1910. You know, these little kids just going down and says, you know, Merry Christmas, or write Jolly Christmas to you. Doesn't matter, by the way. I get this question a lot, Don, as I'm sure you do. Well, what if there's writing on the back? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. People actually like the messages sometimes, depending on what it says. So definitely look for uh, Christmas-related postcards, uh, especially the Santa kind of ones that Don talked about. If they have a little embossing on it, that helps too. So make sure you use that. Dresden, Dresden. Look for the dress. Look for guilt. Yes. Like guilt Santa Claus or Micah. It's not. It's the. It's not. Um. Uh. What do you call it? Um. What's that called? I can't think what you call it. The 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 glitter on these is well. That's not a good example. The glitter <laughs> is not glitter. It is mica which is ground up stone. That's what you look for when you're out looking for good postcards. If it has the glitter on it, it's 1910. That's ground up rocks. And those are highly collected. The, the darker they are, the older they usually are too. If they look kind of like a dark tarnished silver, the, the little, the, the mic on it. Yeah. And to answer Kilroy's question. Yeah. And we got to get back to that postcard question, but real quick, Kilroy, um, do Christmas items sell out of season? Yes, they do. Oh, you're uh, right. Obviously th these are peak months right now, like, you know, October, November, December, really, but, um, they will sell off season. In fact, just the, other, and same with Halloween, Halloween people, some Always people sells. celebrate Halloween all year round. We just saw the Halloween brooch in the middle of December. So Halloween stuff does uh, still sell, but I list them whenever I get them. I never worry about holding on to anything like that. That's true. That's true. Yeah. What about um grading postcards, Don? There was a question on that. Have you have you ever done anything like that or heard of anyone who does that well, grading? People postcards? do them, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Because the highest price uh, postcard ever sold was Babe Ruth, and it was graded. It went for like one hundred and twenty-seven thousand. I got a video even on it. I think from a year or two ago. They the 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 sports related ones are graded religiously. Autographs graded and uh, uh, PSA as well too. I have sent in a couple postcards for the autograph other than that i've never ever had one graded i've never had a babe ruth worth a hundred thousand dollars but th there are a bunch that have been graded um there's every sport out there has them early baseball ones in fact there's some pioneer age postcards sports related ones for some early baseball teams um they're they're similar to some of the trade cards you'll find there some of those are like eight thousand dollars a piece so you're going to grade those for sure. Any sports related ones like pre like a Babe Ruth or a Ty Cobb or any of those hockey, early hockey ones are almost I would never sell one like that without grading it. In all honesty, I've never run into a real nice one like that. But any of the, the sports ones, because it's just it's it's like a baseball card. You, you got to send them in. You can get like five, ten times what you would get for them if they weren't graded by grading them postcards they're it's a hot commodity the sports ones and, and in fact if i'm not mistaken you can actually there's a beckett's guide for the the values of those as well too if i'm not right. mistaken that's interesting um i have something interesting if you want to do a, another screen share i could show something for people that i think they'll be interested in okay yeah check this out so this is something that i found for about five bucks in a state sale and i sold it for a hundred dollars um this is 
through the Danbury Mint. And a lot of people pass up Danbury Mint stuff because they think, oh, it's just overproduced. It's just junky stuff that no one wants. But there, And there is stuff like that. But there is plenty of Danbury Mint stuff that's good. And this is something I want you to look for because this is the Syracuse one. So I live in Syracuse, New York. So that's why I found this particular one. But if you see any of the Danbury Mint uh, Santa-themed um, mascot, so they just took Santa Claus, you know, they did this and they put like you collegiate know, ones go very yeah, well. Colle that's what I, yeah, collegiate. So something with the mascot, something collegiate where they dressed up Santa Claus and then they're you know decorating it like this. This is something that is they're highly sought after. It doesn't matter what you know what school it is necessary. Of course, yeah, more popular schools you know will do good, but um. It, across schools, if you see this type of thing, definitely pick it up. It doesn't matter if it has like some dust on it or whatever, just, you know, just wipe it off. Um, and they'll sell well, just like this one did. So I just want to pass that on. Cause, um, you know, that that's just a, to me, when I see stuff like that, I grab it in two seconds. They make car, they've got die cast cars and model cars yeah. that go for a lot of money too. We've sold some Danbury mint plates. Even like there was a, in fact, I think I have some QP ones here right now still. Danbury makes a lot of like Department 56. I see yeah. a lot of people passing on Department 56 thinking it's trash, but we've sold a lot of Department 56 pieces for 50, 60, like, 70, 80 bucks. Like the houses and stuff? It just in general. Department yeah. we, we sold a little um Friar Bell. We sold um maybe it was a creamer that was shaped like another fryer. I've sold some cats by them. I've sold a bunch of plates. Um, they make a lot of stuff that's priced. The cars always sell. I've always done extremely well with the Danbury Mint cars and stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and like the plates there, what's that Knowles? And then what's the, what's the big, um, what's the plate company? There's a big plate company and everybody says, oh, they don't sell. They don't sell. If you know which ones that sell, there are a bunch that do sell. Mm. It's just, just like any other collectible or True. company name. If, if you know the right ones, right. you know, 5% of everything out there in the collectibles field is really good. And the other 95% yeah. isn't. You that's why we, that's why we try to pass these little tips on, you know, if someone didn't know about like some of these particular things, it just gives you some ideas of what to look for when you're out there sourcing and hopefully it makes you some money. So yeah, uh, you can I minimize always, that if you want. Yeah. Hang on one second. My popular. I was going to say, I always forget to say this, but if you're enjoying the conversation, I got 222 people in house. We haven't broke a hundred uh, pa thumbs up yet, which is you, you know oh, usually I call it out. So come on, it's Christmas. Yeah, come Get on, some, some, Christmas, some, Christmas, some Christmas love here. Hit that like button. I know I'm terrible at even calling that out half the time. <laughs> bobbleheads, yeah, bobbleheads do extremely well. We've sold bobbleheads for four and five hundred dollars if they're vintage. Um, they certain sport plush, ones. certain plush. Someone asked about plush, like Nintendo <laughs> plush, Nintendo plush. Early Sonic, early um, Mario. I've sold Mario's for like two and three hundred dollars before. Who's Dog. the maker on that one? <laughs> uh, it looks heads familiar. And, heads and tails. I uh, don't know that one. But you know, it has this has a nice distinctive look, like with the, the the way they did this beard and the way they have the eyes together looks really nice. This is something we didn't buy to resell. It's just you know something for us in the yeah, home. The shelf. But that's kind of the point is that like that's why people will want something like this. We've had this in the in the family for a long time. So I always bring them out every Christmas time and put them behind me. But, you know, st people will pay up for stuff like that. If you, if you want to talk about plushes, I've probably shown these maybe in a video or two. We have the entire Christmas set by Animal. Um, what's it called? Um, Animal Fair. It, it, look up Animal Fair on eBay. They did the Pepsi, um, Santa Claus, Mrs. Claus and Elves. And we have there's two different sizes of those. We've got the giant size Santa, the giant size Mrs. Claus, the giant size Elves, and we've got the mini ones. And it's basically a big plush in two different sizes made by Animal Fair. Animal Fair is known for Henry the dog. Look up Henry and Animal Fair if you want to know a really good plush. Any plush that says Animal Fair on the label, you darn well better look at it and, and probably just buy if it's only a couple of bucks. The Santa Claus is from Pepsi, out of season, 30 bucks or so for the small ones. In season, 40 or 50 for the small ones. The large ones I've sold for 100. We kept the best ones that we have. They sit under our tree or next to the tree because the one's so big. But if you pay attention, even some of the old Coca-Cola bears, there's some plushes for um, 7-Up. There's a plush for Dr. Pepper. Um, and there's a couple other dozen, a dozen ones that made plushes. I do extremely well with food and advertising. Chester, Chester uh, Cheetah. Yeah. Um, Pink yeah. Panther. For the the um, Orning uh, Owens Corning fiberglass, there's one specific Pink Panther.
plush that was an advertisement. The sheep from Serta. I always get good money out of the sheep from Serta, the plushes. And there's right. like, we've had like 17 or 18 different ones. So there's a whole bunch of them in different sizes. There's the tiny little cute ones, the bigger ones. When you go on into plushes too, if you're really digging the plushes, the wife's got this affinity for finding the old plushes from medicine, like the, the doctors and the pharmaceutical reps. Those plushes do extremely well. And then the other one is the plushes for, um, shoot, what's that other one? Um, shoot, now I'm not going to remember what it, what it was, but there's one more line of plushes that's all tied to like promos like that. And we do good on all of those sorts of plushes. Advertising and promos for, for merchandise are always the best. True. That's true. I'll tell you another one to look for. Any plush that says Knickerbocker on the label. Um, I absolutely love those. I picked up an old vintage. Uh, they Keith do Earth, Earth. Little Orphan Annie, too, they did. And they did the Sesame Street um, ones. Some and, of them, yeah. Th there's yeah. a Kermit the Frog that's by Knickerbocker, too, and I've had that one, too. Okay. Yeah, I have a video thumbnail of me with Oscar de Grouch and Cookie Monster, right? Like they and they're like massive. They're just this gigantic over. But um, yeah, and I did a video when I had to ship them together. It was very sad seeing them go. I had to like do a whole departure ceremony for it and everything. Well, so you didn't have like, to sell them if you didn't want them to go. Well, I, yeah, I know, but that actually gets to a point that has come up in the chat a couple times tonight with some folks, which is that, and I hear this a lot, which is. A lot of people will source stuff and they can't let go of it. Like they just, they're just so they become attached to it. So I went into the sourcing with um, the mindset of no matter how much I really like something like, and, and I, it's going to have to be extremely rare for me to actually be something that I would hold on to like forever. And I wouldn't be able to get rid of it. Like I'd have to literally purchase it and say, I'm purchasing it for me. But if I'm purchasing it, going in, purchasing it for reselling, I, as, even if I think it's cool, if I really like it, I might hold it around and like display it for like a little bit for a few months, but I got, I just tell myself I can't get into that habit because I know if I do get into that habit, I will just have so much stuff that I'm just holding on to. So I just purposely make myself not do that. Well, what we do with stuff like that, I usually keep like really good stuff and I don't do, I, we've got a bunch in the, a, a couple bank uh, security boxes at the bank. We had to get the biggest one they had, but we, we set stuff aside. I don't list like the high dollar stuff. Some of it we send in, I'll get it, you know, PSA or something, and then it'll sit there. I, I don't need the money to rush for it. And it's an investment on some cases. So some of the stuff that we buy, I, I don't care if I sell it right away. Nothing, just like you, most everything I buy, there's very few things that I have to keep or I really have to want to keep. Right. Most everything's for sale, but I've kept stuff for eight, 10 years and I haven't sold it. I don't, I've got so much <laughs> other stuff that it, it, sure. I'm not going to get stuck. At, the value's going up, mostly historical and stuff like that. The value's going up. I get more money if I hold on to it longer. So it's, it's not necessarily... Um, I don't quick flip anything. I don't care if it's quick flip at all anymore. I used to, but not, not for years and years and years. Again, nothing wrong with quick flipping, but that's just not me anymore. You have a question on the highest amount ever for do page picker for an empty box. What do you mean for like an empty, like a, uh, like a toy box or something? Like probably like any kind of empty box. What's the highest price we've sold an empty box. Yeah. Yeah. I have to think about that one. It's probably a Microman by Takara, and it had the inserts. And I want to say we got like three or four hundred dollars. That's that's probably been a long time ago. I haven't run into a Microman, but that's probably the last box that I sold. I've had some Star Wars boxes for like toys. We've had the the trade card empty boxes many many times. I usually get thirty, forty, fifty bucks for those. It, um, if you had the empty box to let's say Castle Grayskull. That would sell for a lot of money. Like if you had the original. Yeah, we we bought I we've bought, you know, you know, empty boxes for a weeble before and spent 50, 60 bucks on an empty box. I mean, the four hundred dollar item that we're trying to find, we I got outbid at the last second on eBay recently, and, and four hundred dollars is more than I uh, it went for by far. But um, it's the box I want. That's all I want. That it's the box that that four hundred dollar weeble item, it's the box that's worth the four hundred dollars. And Empty boxes for uh, like uh, early versions of the iPhone sell for um, all, uh, and iPads and stuff. Uh, they sell for, all out, that's what yeah, I iPods. They sell for a lot of money. So definitely check those out for sure. Vintage, like um, I've got probably like um, I don't know, uh, twenty maybe. Uh, I've got every version 
of the Apple, um, what do you want to call them? Um, what's the, uh, the the MP3 players? I got every version of, especially the little ones, the the jogger ones, and all those. In the box, they go for like ten times what they what they go for loose. If they're sealed, even if it's it's some small like a two gig or something, they go for some phenomenal money. There's people that are nuts over those things, just like any vintage like um, Game Boy, like the Pokemon Game Boy sealed. You want it to color version? I mean, those are like fifteen hundred dollars. Right. I just saw one sell that somebody else sent me a picture of that they picked up for twenty five bucks sealed. Wow. I'm like, dude, you just made like a thousand bucks on something less fees you know after the fees and stuff and it was a, a easy pick right. too many people look at it and they don't know pokemon their kids were into it or it's been set in a closet for 10 15 years that's the kind of stuff that's always the holy grail sitting there that everybody just doesn't think it's going to be worth a ton of money right yeah, paper sure. but you know i love paper um well i'll just mention one thing related to paper and uh, boxes obviously being made out of paper um this isn't really a collectible but it's something um uh, it's good to look for. I've sold a bunch of these things this year. I, I buy them in bulk. Um, this one, I got these and a lot of other ones at a garage sale. Um, I bought an entire box like filled with all sorts of different types. This is just one design, but this is a snowman one. And they're cupcake boxes. Mm -hmm. um, and so I got these for like pennies a piece, really. I think I'm maybe like, maybe most like for some of them a quarter a piece. And, um, you know, you just put them together like in similar themes. So I have like Santa Claus ones and, you know, people who are, you know, into baking a lot for the holidays, we'll pick these up and, or, you know, they might not even put cupcakes in them. They could put anything they want. They could put, you know, little gift, gift boxes together for people. And that'd you know, be a good item to do an Amazon listing on, honestly. Yeah, it probably would be, probably would be, but I have sold them on eBay too. Um, but, uh, they're just, uh, just another idea, something you might find sitting around uh, somewhere, pick that kind of thing up. It's, it's definitely Christmas related. And that's another thing, Christmas related, it doesn't always literally have to say Christmas on it. It doesn't always have to have Santa Claus on it. It could be, you know, snowman related uh, or just something you associate with Christmas. Another thing I would point to is this is something in my store right now um, that I get these kind of things at estate sales would be religious statues and, and figurines. So that, you know, is obviously Christmas related. It doesn't obviously say Christmas on it, but, you know, anything you could link to Christmas and associate with it like this is helpful to, to pick up so yeah religious figures in general i do extremely well all the way up through easter even so you've got like five months straight where they're going to still be moving i've got similar ones i've got a bunch of the plastics mark's made them i've got the italian versions um i should probably throw another i've got a video on those even from way back when but i, I love the religious stuff i i found I've probably found more gold lately that are religious items than I found gold that's like, you know, mixed in junk lots. There's a lot of religious items that people just don't realize are made out of gold. You know, I've seen a couple of platinum, but it's mostly gold. Yeah, Frank says you've inspired him to go more into paper, which is uh, speaking of paper, um, old Christmas carol books, old Christmas coloring books. I do very well in coloring uh, books. Sheet too. music. So, like, this is again is something from a lot. This is two vintage Christmas carol books, song books that I have up right now. I just, you know, sometimes I pair them together, make a, like a little value deal for somebody. Um, that's something that you could just find like an ephemeral lot somewhere, or just you know, people people will give you that stuff for almost free, basically, at an estate sale. They just want to get rid of stuff like that. They don't want to hold on to it. We've got a thrift store around here. I don't get to it very much, but I, I know the people who run it very well. The, the lady who runs it actually goes to my church. And anyway, long story short, I talked to her. I talked to her today, but they get in. I'm talking hundreds. I've never seen so many Christmas cards. And most of the time they're sealed in the package. You get a Christmas package, cards, Christmas cards, NOS yeah. Christmas cards. In fact, We've sent out, we bought our Christmas cards there for a dollar for all of them. We, the wife got some really nice ones. My father-in-law's into hunting and deer and stuff. And I've got some really fabulous ones, but you can buy them new like that. You can list them online and get 10, 15 bucks. I'm spending a dollar a pack and they, they just fly off the shelves when you list them. This is just like, uh, now this is not, this is not vintage, not real vintage, but they don't make them anymore. Like this particular design from this company, uh, uh, Ampad, but you know, Look for stuff like this. You can find them sealed in package with all different designs, combine them together, and you got a nice paper lot of sealed Christmas cards that you could send out to somebody. So just like Don's saying, 
You know, me and him are simpatico, if you haven't noticed. Like, he's saying stuff, and I've got it right here that I'm just – we didn't plan it out. I've just got it around. <laughs> we, yeah, I got, a, I got a bunch of them here with, with Christmas cards. People say, well, vintage are the only thing you can sell in this. And I can buy them wholesale. You can buy Christmas wholesale after Christmas. Hold on to them till next year if you've got the funds to do it. You'll right. be surprised. You can get them again, 10 cents on the dollar after Christmas because of space. When I worked at like um, I worked years and years back, I was a manager at Eckerd's on Lee Road in, in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the year, they we never stored anything. They don't store stuff because the stores all are limited in space. They didn't haul back. So everything at certain stores goes to clearance. Last day of the clearance, it's 10 cents on the dollar. You're talking at the end of January into February is when most of the stuff happens. If you've got the funds, you've got a good eye for stuff. You got some of the best time coming up for NOS items that you can make a killing on coming up next year. I've already bought our Christmas stuff a few months ago for next year. I buy them 18 months sometimes in advance in big bulk when we can because you get the cheapest price possible. If you want a good opportunity, you can hunt down. This year might be even better than, than some of the others because people aren't going out as much. So the stores that overordered, they, they got to get rid of them. They don't send those things back for the most part. So they're blown out. That's what you really want. Grocery stores are awesome for some of that stuff too. True, true. Um, another thing I'll mention, um, I mean, we kind of talked about the Santa Claus plush there, but even beyond that, like anything Santa Claus. Uh, you can see here, this is a giant Santa Claus that I have with the stick right here. You could see how tall he is. This is something I, I actually have this listed right now in my store. Found that at an estate sale for like, five, you know, see, there we go. <laughs> I made this one though. This is mine. This no, is I one made, of mine. I made this too, everyone. So no, I'm just kidding, Don. <laughs> I did make this one. It's 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 Sculpey and the whole works. Those are, I get like 500 bucks for these. Just FYI. Don, have you been a good boy this year? <laughs> yes, I have. You're on the wrong side though. <laughs> As usual. But uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. This has like a leather shell to it. Um, it's got a nice, you know, basically cotton layout. It's got, this is like a nice, looks like, almost looks like a big cinnamon stick, actually. It probably old, is. Holding, I think it is actually. Um, you know, it's got the holly there and stuff. It's a cool piece. So if you know what, if anybody who knows what Aldi's is, this year, yeah, we personally know some people who made thousands of dollars off of Aldi's. They had these these gnomes. They're like um, like a, almost similar to that, but they're gnomes, and you can't really see their faces. I don't know what, where they were, why they got so popular. But the first day we realized that they were hot, there was all these people waiting at Aldi's. It's a German company. They've got yeah. specialty stuff, but uh, there was all these people waiting to get in the door. We just we didn't. I don't know what time they opened. We hadn't been there in a while. So we we waiting in line. Everybody rushes and they're pushing to get into the store. I'm like, what the heck's going on? Is there a dollar sale on something? Yeah. They were all fighting over these gnomes. So I, I didn't get any that day. So I looked them up while while the people were they were literally fighting. And they, everyone in the store was gone in like two minutes. And it turns out they were going for like 65 or 70 bucks online at the same wow. time and only selling for $19 in the store. It was a no-brainer. I don't know if they were selling them, but man, I've never seen seen that many people fighting at an Aldi's in my life. And this was a few months back, but we ended up getting some at some of the other Aldi's. But sometimes it's those types of deals that everybody yep. misses because who's going to go to Aldi's to source? Maybe the people that were that rushed to get them were, but it looked like they actually wanted them for decorations. They were looking at the faces and doing all this stuff. I don't I don't know what the deal was, but for some reason these awful ugly gnomes were going for sixty plus bucks. Yeah, you just never know. By the way, Don, you did just an update for you. Now you're up to 133 likes. So yeah, I'm, I can't even pop back over this section. I hear people talking about um, blow molds. No, talking about postcards. I saw a couple of comments. Okay. I can't quite read it all, but yeah, oh. I, I use a scanner. Somebody was asking if I scan all the photos and fo anything. If it goes through the scanner, I use the duplex scanner. It scans both sides of the card. You can do in a minute, like 200 images, you know, front and back. So hundred right. items in a minute are, are, are better. As fast as I can feed those into my duplex scanner. I got two of those scanners. We bought a backup because it, it's awesome. I use it for eight by tens. If it fits in there, I use it. And if, if, even if it's not squared off, we've got carrier sheets. A carrier sheet means I can put in an oddball shaped item and it'll scan just like anything else. It's a clear sheet made designed to not reflect and it fits into the scanner. It's made for those scanners. So if, if it scans on the duplex, in fact, it's it's always next to my computer, plugged in 
If I get home, I want to scan something, I click a button, and I can just instantly drop it in and already have it listed in like a minute from me being home if I want to list something right away. That's amazing. It's it's the best. The scanner's the best. You know, I've I've got some. We've got the flatbed. I've got the V six hundred series because it does negatives. It's it's a dual side scanner, so it's got a light on the top, so it'll shine through glass plate negatives, thirty five millimeter slides. You can even do film, motion picture film. You know, if you want, you can stretch it across and do some scans. So I use that a lot too. I scan everything these days if I can get away with it. It's far easier. A scanner like the DS510 or any, I always say 510 because that's what I have, but any version newer than the DS510 is fine. Um, it, it'll cut your time down taking photos of postcards, let's say, or photos of photos. Probably it'll it'll cut it down in a fifth of the time you can get it in a scanner or even quicker. People are surprised if you set it to 75 DPI, you can't even feed it quick enough. It just, it's taking it so quick. I can set a stack on that scanner and walk away and it's done too. So, so you like Epson products? Um, it's just what I happen to have. I mean, I yeah. bought the Epson because the first Epson I had was the best scanner that I had. We actually had given up on scanners for a little while until we got the V600 and the DS510. I mean, I've got an extra of both of those scanners. That's how much I like them. So if one dies, I'm fine. But the, the V600 is an expensive one. It's like three or three to 500, depending on, on if you get the extra slide in uh, black sh uh, racks that go on the, the display. Again, it's 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 a it's a all around photo scanner for slides and negatives and glass plates. Comes with stitching app so you can do like a full size, like a full sheet, eight by 10 glass plate you can do in there. You'd have to do it two different scans, but it, it, everything comes with it. It's called uh, the, the Perfection, right? Uh, V600 series. I don't yeah. know what's what's the, the technical name. They used to have a Perfection series specifically, but I just look for the V600, uh, any one of the V600 or newer ones. Um, and then the DS510, DS uh, stands for double side, I think, or something. But DS510 is like the best overall paper scanner you can get in my book or, or any newer version. I don't recommend stuff I've never used. So maybe there's a hundred other brands that are just as good. But I just never use them. I don't like to say, hey, use something if I haven't used it because I can't tell you if it really works or not. So Right, right. What's the, it's, it's, it's a carrier sheet is what you – and you have to order them special. It's not made by Epson. Um, just go to like Newegg or something and type in carrier sheet, and you should be able to find them very, very readily. Um, I think you can get three carrier sheets for like 20 bucks delivered, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they come in different sizes, different thicknesses. Um there's a there's a, a 18 inch duplex scanner you can get it's like a thousand bucks but they're, they even carry carrier sheets for those just like they've got an 18 inch wide uh, flatbed scanner for the printing industry too which i have one of those but i don't have the duplex scanner that's that big um i have i think one more i could show you if you want to do a screen share yeah, just sure. since we talked about ornaments in the beginning kind of could come full circle with ornaments i'll show you something interesting that we uh, sold Hang on just a second. I was there. We go. So these are ornaments that are they're really tiny, but they are um, angels. Uh, and you could see that each angel is, you know, well, there's duplicates of some of them, but many of them are holding something different. Like this one has a candle. This one has a star. This one's reading a book. That kind of thing. This one is like a lantern. Uh, these sold for forty five bucks. I got them for like two bucks or something you know like in like a little bag and i just knew once i saw them and i just saw like just that vintage look to them you know they don't make really angels with those kind of faces on them anymore these days that that was just going to be a nice easy flip so i just lined them up like that took the photo and there you go i mean that's it 45 dollars sale first class shipping easy easy peasy so look for those kind of ornaments too some real tiny ones that could you know come in like a little lot like that Oh, okay. Small it does, size doesn't matter on the ornaments yeah. because people like the yeah. feather trees and some of those little tiny ornaments can go for as much as the big ones. Yeah, you know I was really surprised. Yeah. Jack S. Retro was talking about the scanner too. My scanner is a workhorse. I've scanned probably fifty thousand pieces of paper or images or postcards just through one of the scanners. Maybe if it's even more than that, just one year probably. We we use the heck out of that thing. The only thing I would say is after you know a couple of uses to always go in blow it out we've got i've come out the air compressor either that or my little vacuum attachment out there clean off the glass after you know a couple hundred hundred ones too and then clean it out because otherwise it's going to jam up the, the rollers or you're going to get paper in where the the gears are for the advancer on it I, i've taken them apart myself they're they're awesome scanners 
That's why I say the, the Epson DS versions are the best and because I've used them. I, I know I've never had an issue. I've never uh, had any, any worries on them at all. They've got different settings, so you can do thick and thin paper. You can add the borders on them. They come with the app with them. Um, you can get all the, the Twain, so you can link them to other other applications and import straight. So I have a Twain app. So even though I don't I, I don't have to use my Epson app to do anything, I can just basically import it to my graphics program. You can import it right into Photoshop or Illustrator directly. So you don't even have to like have a crossover program. It's it's just a small little attachment, just like if you're going to get the the add-on bridge for like an older version of Windows so you can use the new Windows format for, you know, Word documents. It's the same basic principle. It works great. I love that that scanner. Let me yeah. put us back on there. Having the proper tools is, I mean, it's, it's just so much more important. I'm glad, like Popeye, Popeye's postcards is why I got that scanner, honestly. Oh, yeah. um, He's back, like, by the way. Did you know that? Yeah, I didn't. I haven't had, somebody else told me that too. I haven't had a chance to, to look out or reach out to him or anything, but He's the reason I bought one of those because we gave up on scanners. But that duplex scanner, oh my gosh, that's the amount of items we can scan is just horrendously increased. That's why I say these days I don't like to mess with stuff that I have to worry about more than five photos usually. If I got to do more than five photos, it's going to sit around for a while or I just won't buy it anymore. Because, again, the biggest factor in my book, if you're going to do mine or Dom's, Dom's style to get a bunch of stuff up, if you want quantity up, you got to you got to get stuff that's easy and quick to list. Easy and quick. It's got to be easy and quick. If it's not, you're going to be spending too much time. You can't do you can't have 30,000. We got like 80,000, close to 80,000 items live. Different items live right the second on one of our sites, you know, combined. That's about what we got combined. There's no way on earth like you're going to get 80,000 pieces of clothing because it takes too darn long to do anything with it. I can get easy at least 40 postcards up in an hour if i'm flying through them you know and that's counting scan time with that ds scanner anybody like jack esser i guarantee you he knows how quickly those things scan postcards right you don't have one you, I, you're not that heavy in the postcards though no i have a ton of them but i don't i don't have a scanner but uh i do have a ton of postcards and if i was going to like dedicate myself to going tense on them i probably would get one yeah, it's like well, it'll do photos, anything, anything that's a piece of pay eight, eight, eight eight and a half by 11 or they're about I, smaller. I mean, I technically have a scanner because my printer has a scanner attached to it. So I technically have one, but I just haven't really incorporated it yet. Yeah, I, I, um, it saved us. I mean, just an ungodly amount of time it saved us. I mean, I just, I could never say enough how much that saved us. Yeah, I'm all about saving time for sure. No, definitely. Well, it's the only way you get more stuff up, and you have to figure out what's going to. That's why the reason I hated clothing so much because you just waste so much time and yeah. just even to buy it. It takes more time because you've got to sit there and look, make sure there's no hole. It might take you five minutes in the thrift store to decide if you're going to buy I, it. Do you know what's easy, though? With, with I'll tell you one area of clothing that's really easy hats. I do because okay. all, all, all I got to do is plop that hat on a mannequin head and just put it on my whiteboard to take a photo to the front, take a photo to the back, the side, the, the bottom, and that's it. And I'm done. So just a few photos. I could go through, if I get into like a hat rhythm, I mean, I literally cleared out all my hats this month, but just, I just dedicated myself to the hats and just did like a death pile challenge and just listed all, just got them all listed. And it was, it was easy. Yeah. So, I'm not a big um, fan of clothing in general, truthfully, but I've yeah, got, but I know what you're saying. Like if, if there's a big difference though, between like the hat and like, if you're trying to list a pair of jeans or especially t-shirts could be a real pain. If you're trying to, you, know, you could get all the measurements and you're trying to get the lint off of it. If you're trying, you know, trying to get the wrinkles off, it could be, it could take forever to do one shirt. So it, it could be tough. Yeah. I, I've, I've sold some of the old trucker hats and stuff, but I, I just stay away. I picked, I've got some NOS ones here from some colleges I picked up like two years ago. They're still sitting in a box. They're all new. They still have the tag. They got the hologram. They're legit. I think I paid like 50 cents or a dollar for them. I just couldn't draw myself to list them. I guess I like the other stuff so much better. Um, I will say for Duncan, Duncan. Uh, so I will say, I, now I didn't, I don't think through these things all the time last night. So I did have a live show last night. Don's show started at seven. Mine show started at eight because I had a selling show with Susan that we do every once in a while from Vintage Vagabond Ven. She's often in Don's chat. And um, that was just the only day we could do it that worked with both of our schedules. So that's why. So it was like a, 
a rare instance where Don and I were on live at the same time. So Duncan said, who to watch when they're on at the same time, Don or Dom? I'm going to tell you, watch Don for sure. <laughs> Just watch Don. Well, I actually, when Don's done, come over to mine. <laughs> well, we were actually going to do the live show yesterday together. We were. Yeah, That's that was the original. Up. That's what messed it up. So yeah, that was the plan. And that, that's all my fault. So apologize. <laughs> yeah, I think we're running really late now. I don't yeah. want to keep you go. We'll probably try and end it off here in just a few moments, I guess. Yeah. Time always yeah. seems to go by fairly quick. But another year has come and gone. And um... talking about shipping on the hats, eBay, wish I could get it now, but there's a box that eBay has. I, you can get, I, yeah, it's, it's the exact size you need. It's already done. All you do is put it in there. I throw some tissue paper when I ship out hats. It's a standard eBay size. It's in the eBay by box. Eight by six. Pardon me? You could use the, I have a video on it. Go to my channel. I have a whole video on how to ship hats. Uh, a lot of people have checked it out. It's helped a lot of people really easy. Use the 10 by eight by six box or the eight by eight by eight box. Either one. That's it's the, the same, same one I use for posters too. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 you can get it from eBay and it's, it's fairly cheap. Obviously if you can get them cheaper locally, it'd be better, but we've got the free boxes. I get $300 every three months, 150 per store. So I, I eat them up with the boxes. I don't half the time I end up selling them to somebody else, but which is something else you can do if you get the free boxes. Yeah. That eBay 10 by 7 by 9 is great for hats. Yeah, that's probably the same one I'm using too. There's two different sizes. There's one that's a little bigger and you might have to cut it down. Um, it just, again, depends on what they're... Sometimes they're out of those boxes, I notice too. Yeah, but you could do the 10 by 8 by 6 too. That's a little bit smaller in dimensions and that, that works fine also. So it might, might cost you a little bit less. Yeah, again, buy them locally. I would never, if you're going to buy boxes, don't buy them from eBay. Just go to a local box company and see what they're called. Call around first. I can tell you, in my era, I can tell you where you can get anything the cheapest because I've dealt with every one of the, the box makers. We, we get the bubble wrap and the end cuts. Um, and sometimes they've even had to make me envelopes. I've had to make me uh, actual true six by nines and stuff like that before too. So a local box company, is a great person to be friends with. And around here, they they the first time I found out that you could even get that was was like four or five years ago. The one smart guy was a reseller and he was the marketing guy that they hired at the box company here. And he was listing all over Craigslist and all over the place. And it's the only reason I know what an end cut was because somebody smart was right. a reseller and he said, hey, we can sell these end cuts. So, and in fact, I told another company, why don't you sell this to me? When the other company is out, I just go to somebody else and he sells them to me now because he was trashing them, which was odd that you just trash that much bubble wrap. I mean, you're talking a thousand feet of bubble wrap I can get for like 15, 20 bucks sometimes. And um, Eric is correct. Um, I talk about this in the video. Make sure you put the hat in a bag uh, before you put it in the box. So. Oh, yeah. Everything goes in plastic. I don't yeah. care what it is. I seal every single thing we have in a piece of plastic, a bag of something. Nothing is sent that's not sealed. Yeah. I only get from eBay because of coupons. Otherwise, no. Yeah. Junk and data girl, same thing. I only get those boxes because they're free. You get with the anchor store, you get 150 per uh, every three months. I got two anchor stores, so I got $300 in boxes every three months. Twelve hundred dollars a year, and you're, you're instead of just throwing them away, I do that. Either that, or I'll just get a whole bunch of six by nines. I've even tried their um, tissue paper. Um, again, it's it's like twice what I can get it for locally, but it's free, kind of not, but yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Because I they didn't used to do that. You just paid less. Now they raise the price, and they're giving us boxes. I uh, I'd rather get the boxes locally and be done with it. No shipping charge or anything else like that, too. Yeah, I said we'll end it off here. You want to give some final thoughts off here and, and uh, uh we'll go DuPage, from there. DuPage picker penance, use the cardboard sandwich. That's what I do. But um for what? Yeah, the penance. I roll them up. I do them roll up and then they roll them up. Up. Yep. They that's the best way. I've got a core, and what I use for the core is I use the empty tape rolls, and I just wrap them around that so it can't get crushed. I roll them up, I stick them in a bag, and they go in a box. Yeah, I never I never ship those flat because it's it okay. and I stopped shipping. Uh, if, if the poster will fit in a box, it goes in a box these days. I don't use the tubes unless I have to. If I'm The best one is to do a triangle or, or mail those stuff in a box. But a pennant, just roll it up around some of your empty cores from your tape. Nothing's going to happen to it. I, I can guarantee you, you don't have to worry about this big package. A pennant fits in a small little box. It cuts the weight down of shipping costs and everything else. Put them in a box and roll them up. That's I swear to you, that's the best way you can do it. I've tried everything, and that always works. 
Duncan said my left eye looks a little sleepy today. Yeah, sometimes my left eye will droop down a little bit if I've had a really long week. Um, and I have, so. Uh, but I'm looking forward to the weekend. I've got a bunch of stuff planned. So uh, I do appreciate uh, coming on your show again, Don, to do the Christmas special. Uh, I love doing that every year. And it was fun talking about it. We, never di we didn't do this on the other Christmas shows where we really talked about Christmas collectibles. So I had fun uh, going around all these different collectibles and talking trading stories and sharing all sorts of tips with folks i think everyone you know got something out of it from either one of us or both of us and uh it was fun i'm looking forward to doing another one next year and uh continuing the show yeah there's a lot of christmas stuff i could show i could just spend all day talking about christmas stuff we got laying around but oh there's carl carl bach in the house by the way welcome welcome carl haven't seen you around in a while hopefully you're doing okay carl Carl, I was mentioning your earlier. You got something special uh, coming in the mail in that uh, in that package that I'm sending out to you. So just uh, FYI. <laughs> anyway, well, we're gonna head it off here because we're already at the hour and forty minutes. I'll do one right. last hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying the conversation. I haven't even seen how many we have in just over two hundred right now. So again, if you're enjoying the conversation, please hit the thumbs up. Uh, one one quick thing. Go ahead. Um, you could sell. So if you sandwich a pen pennant, you could still ship it first class. Um, some people, there's a mention in there about it being too big. I ship all sorts of big stuff that lay flat like posters, some certain posters that can't roll. So they're big. They're bigger than pennants. As long as they're 16 ounces or less, I could still ship them out first class. Post office accepts them all the time. Um, and they, they go out. No problem whatsoever. As long as it's so, under 16 ounces. with the as pen long as it's 16 ounces or less. If you roll it up, it's like eight yeah. ounces. That's all it is. And it's in the box, yeah. eight ounces. It's first class. You'll, you'll, ne I, I promise you, the roll it up, in my yeah. opinion, is the best bet. Just be careful. I always save all of my empty, I've got hundreds of them here, the empty tape cardboards. I always save those. You just tape a couple together, wrap it around there, and off you go. It's not going to crush it. Everything's going to be fine. Those tape, if you've got a bunch of those taped together, I've even used those for mailing tubes in the past. If I was really lazy and didn't feel like going out, but they weren't great. I promise yeah. you. They might technically say on their website, for example, that there's a limit with the number or whatever with the inches. But in my experience, just shipping out, I've never, ever had them like return one or anything like that. Like I've just never had an issue. So I think there is um, a limit like they're yeah, saying. There is, there is is like a, yeah, there is like a te like technically, yes, there's a there's a spec on the site, but practically it's never been an issue. So I say it with the box, you'll never have right. a problem because it's it's right. the box is like an eight inch box or something. All the box has to be is an inch wider than the widest uh, spot of the actual. And that again, I use eBay boxes for those. We've sold right. hundreds of pennants and I always send them that same way. It's yeah. easy, it's cheap. They can't get messed up. If somebody bends it, it's not going to hurt because again, it's rolled up and it's got a core on the inside. So anything I can send in a box, like I used to do the mailing tubes for posters, but I totally gave up on those. It's so much better to do a triangle box that you can instantly make at home in like two seconds, or if it'll fit like the 11 by 17 posters or what I got a bunch going out now. They're yeah. the concert, um, tour posters, album release posters and stuff. They just fit in a box and you just run them diagonal. So the box doesn't have to be that big. So that's a big plus on that. But l let's, let's end it off on here. I'll do a, a quick, uh, couple of updates here again for those in patreon videos will be up this weekend um, i will address any questions you post today tomorrow so if you got anything pressing post it up tonight i will take care of it and respond to everybody by the end of day tomorrow video will be up tomorrow as well um and there will be another video up here obviously i did shoot a video this morning for here on youtube as well i've got a video for bolos and i've got a couple other interesting ones covering a few topics ebay's got some new updates and a few other things going on too if you're unaware of so just pay attention um i was one other thing and i totally lost train of thought bargain hunters thrift well thank you very kindly Merry Christmas to you. Thank you very kindly for your super chat there. $10 super chat. Thank you very, very kindly. I totally always forget about that, but we're going to cut it off here. I do appreciate everybody coming on again. One last time, if you haven't hit the thumbs up, please hit the thumbs up. If you don't know who Dom is, or you're just ch checking us out now. I've got his link right there at the very top of the description box. I would honestly recommend clicking on over to his, his channel and signing up for it and subscribing as well. So anyway, we're going to let it go. You have any final goodbyes you want to wave out to or anybody there, Dom? 
Uh, no, Duncan wanted me to do a chipmunk voice before I leave, but I'll save that for my channel. So, uh, Duncan, next time you come over, I'll give you a chipmunk voice. But thanks. Sorry, Duncan. <laughs> Sorry, Duncan. <laughs> he, he always tries that. Duncan always tries to push the envelope a little bit there. He's always instigating. He's, he's from Australia. You got to give him at least yeah, a little yeah, break we'll, there. We'll give him a little pass. <laughs> well, we will let y'all go. Hopefully, everybody has a good Christmas. You'll hear from us again. Both of us will have our channels out there. You'll see us again, hopefully, by Christmas time as well, too. But have a good evening. Have some good sales and enjoy the rest of the day. Bye, everyone.